Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This week's video, I'm using a Hobart Ironman 230 MIG welder to show the effects of using straight CO2 with uh, alongside of using 7525 argon CO2. And I'm doing a little pull technique with both of them and then also a push with the uh, 7525 mix and then I'm going to slice and dice and check for penetration. Now, some time ago, before I got a decent camera, I did this video called MIG Welding Technique Taught by Old Timer and uh, the camera just made it look kind of cold but my intention was was to just show this little technique making a series of loops or a series of uh, views to get a good uh, rippled pattern a good even increment of travel speed on a bead not saying this is good for structural steel this is short circuit MIG you, you really wouldn't rarely use short circuit MIG for anything any kind of heavy structural steel this is just a general fabrication kind of a technique but the the video got a whole lot of views again showing the little looping technique here and then also a series of views if you want to speed the uh, travel speed up a little bit got a lot of views but some negative comments too about how I didn't penetrate and you know this and that like you tend to get on YouTube videos so I decided to do a little CO2 versus 7525 and slice and dice. Now to use the CO2 I needed this Western Item 806 uh, adapter CGA 320 to 580 thread and it's got a little nylon seat that you have to poke down in there before you uh, install it and that seats against the CO2 cylinder neck so we'll put that on real quick here and then that and then your regular regulator with the 580 thread will screw into that and just extends it out a little bit now I'm using hot rolled steel, A36 steel, quarter inch. Didn't clean a thing because I want to also see how well uh, how well the arc penetrates through the hot rolled mill scale because that's important to know too. And also, I just didn't want to spend the time to clean it. Realistically, if you're fabricating a trailer or a set of shelves or a rack or something, a lot of times you would not clean that hot rolled off. So this is the pull technique using the straight CO2. You look at the front edges of the puddle, you can see it's wetting in pretty good. And here's a pull technique using same same trying to keep the technique and the stick out and everything the same and the wire feed speed is the same roughly. This is a pull technique with a 7525. It looks something like that. And then last thing I did was uh, a push a push angle with the uh, 7525. Now you know it's an age-old argument about whether it's better to push or pull and everybody's got an opinion on that and the textbooks generally say pulling penetrates a little deeper, a little deeper profile but a lot of people argue the other way. So once I was done I welded a little bit on the back side too to make sure we had all three and in between each bead I quenched it so that I wouldn't, uh, the preheat wouldn't influence the penetration and then marked them so I wouldn't mix them up which was which cut them on a saw and I use about an 80 grit flap disc to get all those rough grind and uh, I mean uh, saw scratches out of it followed up by a little roll lock wheel here a little two inch scotch bright roll lock wheel and the smoother you get it the easier it'll etch but next comes the, the uh, etching, swab etching with uh, the proper etchant. Mm -hmm. And you see how it reveals the, uh, the weld nugget there. So here's the straight CO2 pull technique. Penetrated well into the root of the joint. And then next is the 7525 argon CO2 pull technique. A little dot on the bead on the top there. But the other one looks okay. And here's the uh, R, uh, 7525 push technique. Both of these got into the root really well. Now, a lot of this is due to just how well I kept on the front edge of the puddle and my technique and everything, so kind of inconclusive. But the settings I used were based loosely on what was inside the door of the, the chart, or the chart on the inside of the door of the Ironman 230, following the instructions and the size wire that I'm using and coming over to the thickness that I used it gave me a recommendation for voltage and wire feed speed and I found I just had to turn the wire feed speed down a little bit to make it uh, make it not stub in the puddle. Another way is using the, the uh, this little iPhone app from Miller and you select material type, a couple of clicks, then you've got your uh, settings here roughly. 
for a quarter inch thickness it recommended 360 to 380 inches a minute and I found it was more like 350 to 360 and uh, recommended a certain voltage for the CO2 versus voltage for the 7525 is because it's definitely different same settings are not going to work identically for straight CO2 gas as they do for 7525 just got a whole different set of physics going on in that arc a little review here okay quarter inch hot rolled A36 steel pulling technique with straight CO2 done all manually so you know it, a lot of it is influenced by my technique and there's the nuggets on the straight CO2 and here's the 7525 you can kind of hear it's a little smoother a little smoother sound to the arc and there's what that did bead on the far right looks just fine and here's the push using 7525 again trying to keep a short stick out trying to stay on the front edge of the puddle and the two beads on the left two nuggets on the left are the uh, the result all right well thanks for watching visit weldingtipsandtricks.com